Hey there, folks. It's been a while. Uh, it's still in the middle of the pandemic. They call it, uh, I don't know if it's called first wave or what, but this is the uh, way it feels to me. People got real concerned, but now they're used to the idea. So even though in the USA jurisdiction, we're just passing the 2 million mark of confirmed cases. That's not deaths. That's cases. People are much more adjusted to the idea. And of course, this is a time of a lot of crowding into cities to uh, to make a political point. Anyway, my screen's acting up. I'll come back to it. Uh, I've got uh, listening to Yanis yesterday. Am I even on the internet here? I must be, right? It's 4D Sys 1. I go to a faster. I've got two uh, internet ports here, two... Uh, channels. Now let's just take a brief look at my history. Like I'm really studious guy and what this video is about if you're just joining us is I sort of have an alternative curriculum, don't we all? And it's somewhat aimed at an odd place. Usually alternative curriculums have some new history they want to share and that's true. I've got Occupy here as something to study which is old enough. Let's see where is it? Do I even see Occupy? Hmm. I thought I had it here. Okay, I'm going to stop this whole video if I can't find Occupy. Maybe it's further down. Oh, here we go. History. See, there's my my alternative history taking shape. I've got a section on Rajni Puram here in Oregon. Vortex Festival. See, these are very place-based. If you watch my channel, I stroll around in my neighborhood. I talk about where I'm at. <clears throat> And then my curriculum, you might be thinking, well, it's what, we're going to drop our textbooks and all jump into Kirby's Martian math? you got to be crazy. And it's not really that. It's not really that's what I'm advocating or expecting. It's more like, as a teacher, I'm doing what I think a teacher's job is, which is put your curriculum as you've clipped it together edit, recombine, as you value added in your life and looked through all of what there is to look through, what would you distill down as a useful something or other, right? So I do that in my, um, I won't call it spare time because I think of it as my, it's, it's time I can spare, I guess we put it that way. But I've, I have devoted a considerable amount of my time to this kind of alternative curriculum, which features, as you know, if you're not new to this channel, a lot of the Bucky Fuller stuff. But I'm trying to show it in context. In other words, okay, so how would we bring that in? It's like people's imaginations maybe see it as a disruptive thing to talk about the unit tets and tetra volumes and so on. But here I'm also harping on other themes that are, have long been big with me. That's some number theory and group theory at the high school level stronger than it is, right? It may get touched on some prep schools, high tuition might go a little deeper into this. But for example, here's my Python for a number class that just builds in the modulus, say here modulus 12, that we're adding and multiplying with respect to. And I go on to introduce totatives, which are numbers less than or equal to n, not equal to n, actually 1 up to n minus 1 that are um, have no factors in common, right? So they're called strangers or coprime. And so the totatives of 12, for example, are 1, 5, 7, 11. So off times in this channel, I drop into what I call the school of tomorrow, and I emphasize what's what's growing here. I was showing you some history a second ago, history of Occupy is part of it. Now what's going on right now, say in Seattle with the autonomous zone and so on, it, it has some connection, or rem, it's reminiscent, right, of what we were doing in, in Portland here in 2009 with Occupy Portland. Then there was Occupy's all around the world, but this is one of the bigger ones in Portland. And what people don't always know is the history, right? So I'm big into studying history, and that's where, like, um, the Bonus Army comes in and what was General MacArthur's role and 
who was president at the time, Hoover and so forth. Hoovervilles, what were those? What was Portland's role in that history? Uh, where did the Bonus Army start its parade, so-called, to get their b bonus, right? It's the middle of the Depression. These are vets from World War I, and they've been promised some kind of bonus in the far future now that their lives are in wreck. Of course, the government doesn't think it has any money. As usual, it's been talked to by the bankers who have a theory of money and where m wealth comes from. The, the Marxists and the capitalists somewhat have the same view, which is that human labor is the source of all value. And, of course, if you're a Bucky design scientist type guy, that's not your view, right? Not that you don't value humans, but uh, economics gets a different spin, kind of a facelift. I call it general systems theory. So here in the number theory page, I'm not trying to take on all of number theory even if I could, which I can't because I don't know it. Like, my blender skills are just nascent. And so my point, what I was saying earlier is, as a teacher, I'm just role modeling what I think any teacher would be doing these days if they have the skills and access, which I do, to YouTube, to Jupyter Notebooks, to GitHub. All this I've talked about is pretty much free, except in terms of hardware. Notice I'm getting a lot of La Tech work out here, getting some math notations. Like behind the scenes, it looks like this. And I cut and pasted this. I'm big into Euler's theorem, but it would take me forever to uh, figure out exactly how to do the La Tech here. So I just find it on the internet. And copying and pasting is not bad. We of the open source world, who we encourage digital media to spread around quickly. And so I'm like, yeah, go ahead and clone this. And if you're a teacher, make it better, right? So I, I code up a fraction class here, even though Python already has a fraction class. It really helps students understand about operator overloading. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this as all like high school level now. You might say, well, this is <clears throat> not what we do in high school. This looks pretty alien, and nobody's going to study this, this wild equality identity in high school. And I'm saying, look, it's just approach it differently. It's an identity. It's really shorthand for an algorithm. Like, how do you do continued fractions as an algorithm, right? So we're mapping one notation to another, one computer language to another. Because a computer used to be a person. Now it's a machine, but either way, it's a computer language. So I map it to Python, and I verify it out to a certain number of digits, which is not a proof, so we make it very clear that it's not a proof. It's a different approach. We spend time on stuff that isn't proofs, and we acknowledge they're not proofs. But we, we do get the value. We get the value, and we get the meaning. So without the proof, in some cases, now I'm not against proofs, but I'm saying don't deny yourself access to, uh, to a working technology because you can't prove why it works, right? It's like don't turn on a television until you understand all of electronics. It's not like that, is it? So I'm growing this um, school of tomorrow and encouraging people on YouTube. Now my YouTube channel has not much going uh not much viewers right it's got some here's my history going by you can see i've been a busy bee watching a lot of stuff as usual so the point is though if people were to question my sincerity and like hey you had free access to youtube you had all these toys and all you did was belly ache and whine and like say why don't they listen to me when you didn't take advantage of the tools at, at hand it's like if you're all into tools and artifacts and you think living standards advance through that kind of thing, then why don't you use your artifacts? Why don't you take care? Why don't you like show show what you're talking about? And exactly, like that that would be a good reproach of me. So I had to cover that, right? And so I did do hundreds, literally hundreds of YouTubes where I do get into the details of this math and why I think you need to learn it. It's a tip of the iceberg. But then I recategorize other math, too. I've got Neolithic math, casino math, which is probability. And, yeah, we study the history of casinos. And, yeah, we study 
um, Native Americans and their whole trajectory. It's all part of the history, right? So when I talk about casino math, I'm not trying to avoid the institution, but we're also talking about risk management, uh, investment banking, you could call it, anything you want to look at under the heading of trying to predict the future. That's all of data science in a way. Predict, yeah, the future, the past, predict. Predictability, modeling, all right? And then Blender and all this other stuff. So it's an interesting curriculum. And you're, if you're watching this, you're in an interesting position because this is a huge iceberg and you're looking at a tip. And this math goes into the Bucky stuff, Buckminster Fuller, Medal of Freedom winner, gazillion inventions, patents, all this stuff. If you want to make America great again and skip Bucky in the process, good luck. I don't think it's going to happen. So I always look to see what schools, in particular which high schools, have the chutzpah, the balls, the daring to actually study this material. Very, very few, right? So I feel lucky that I get to write this curriculum. And um, wow, you could you could help me. You could join not the channel necessarily, but join the effort to bring this stuff to the surface where it belongs, more to the surface, right? So that others can benefit. And we'll talk more later. Thanks for listening.